to ask that everybody please be courteous and respectful to each candidate as they answer their questions. And so we go. Councilwoman Asian, ready for the first question? No. They introduce oh, I'm sorry. They're going to give a free file. Who's going to go first on the file? Good evening. Can everyone hear me? Uh, brief introduction. My name is Richard Jelanski. I am a lifelong resident of Maple Heights. I've been here since 1978. I'm a graduate of the Maple Heights High School of class of 1998. I'm a three-term city council member and I'm the city council of OTEM. Um, I have had uh, experience in management for U.S. Bank. I'm currently a barista and learning coach for Starbucks and I'm currently a junior attending Penn State University with earning a bachelor's in political science with a minor in risk and security analysis. And thank you for allowing me to be here and for me allowing me to get to speak to you on the platform of the nation. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Aaron Mitchell. I'm a 30-year resident here in the city of Maple Heights. I've um, worked for a number of agencies off across the city of Cleveland in a variety of capacities. Once as a, a recruiter with the Oakley Young People for Educational Purposes, worked as a community organizer in the university settlement, uh, where we address community issues, as well as a community resource specialist at the university settlement, where I'm providing resources to the, the residents in the South Beach community. I uh, recently worked at um, Board of Rights and Life Center, which is located in Garfield Heights, where I serve as the, the, the citizens in Maple Heights, Garfield Heights, Walk Hills, Valley View, Oakwood Village, with vital needs and residential um, assistance, including rental assistance, uh, utility assistance, educational programs, and mental assistance, as well as uh, before and after school care and um, a, a food center. Uh, right now, I currently work at Brooks Insurance over in Maple Heights. I keep everything local and also work part-time at the gas station overall across from City Hall. Um, I'm in this position because I believe I have the experience that it takes to make sure or to ensure that the people of Maple Heights have a voice and have their voice heard. And I thank you for this opportunity. Good evening. The first question is why are you seeking the office council president and what experience do you have? You have three minutes. Um, I'm seeking the position for council president because we need a person with experience as well as a set of common sense solutions to address the city issues identifying, for example, our commercial and residential stabilization. We have homes that have been foreclosed, abandoned, we've lost businesses. Uh, we need someone that understands how government works and has a tangible idea of how to address these issues as well as human engagement. We have residents who feel disengaged. We need to be addressing the issues of how to feel, get the residents involved, and youth, seniors, working families, uh, as well as we need to be working on public uh, safety. These are issues that I feel that I have the experience. I have done tangible things, working policy as well as uh, action that can benefit the city. And we need someone that understands the city, the issues and the residents, as well as I'm the council pro tem. The council pro tem is the person who serves as the acting council president when the council president is absent. And so we need someone that in a leadership position that understands the position, what the position entails, and the experience of how government works. Being a policy maker, as well as understanding the community. And so that's why I'm running for this position, because I have the experience and I have common sense solutions to address our city's needs. Thank you, Councilor. Mr. Mitchell. Question again, please. Why are you seeking the office of council president, and what experience do you have? I'm seeking the office of um, council president because I believe I have what it takes to help the citizens not only be inspired, but also come out and be involved. The experience I have is as a community organizer, primarily where I went to the door, grassroots level, uh, inspiring people to take action to address the issues and needs that they have within their own community. I relate to the people in the city of Maple Heights. As I said, I went to, I attended Maple Heights High School. I didn't graduate from Maple Heights High School, I left, but I have a passion for Maple Heights because everything that I am is part of who I came here at Maple Heights. I was able to finish school because of the education I received, even though limited here in the city of Maple Heights. Um, I have the experience in the variety of capacity. I've been serving the people in Maple Heights for a number of years. I built relationships and friendships. We talk about ideas. There are a number of best practices that I have been able to acquire over the course of years in a variety of positions in a variety of areas working in the city of Cleveland. I have partnerships built all across the city. 
um, not only partnerships with people I can call on in times of need, I have resources that are available because I was a resource specialist. My idea of this position is not only addressing the needs of the citizens, but also ensuring that our council works as a cohesive team. Uh, if we can't agree on simple things like policy, then we have no choice. We have no solution, we have no opportunity. Our council is in a position not only as leaders, but also in a position as teachers. And, and how our council interacts with one another inspires our citizens, shows our citizens how we are expected for them to interact and correspond with one another. If our citizens see our council is unable to come up with solutions, our citizens are not going to be willing to work with their neighbor in order to find solutions within our community. I work on the grassroots level, which means I believe that it's time for our city council to come out of the office and start reaching back to the city and start bringing the people and inviting people back into City Hall so that we can inspire those people to get involved and engage in the policy that are being presented to us. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Second question. Yes, Many people do not know the duties of the council president. Please explain the three top duties of this very important elected position. Please be detailed in your response. From my understanding, the three top positions, three top detailed oriented things that the city council president is required to do is first of all and foremost is to ensure that the council members are doing their job to serving the people of Maple Heights. If in the event where they are not able to serve, then I would have to step up and make sure that the people's voice is heard and their, their issues are addressed. Number two is appointing everyone on city council to a committee. We have to have special people or have experience or knowledge in order to make sure that committee operates and functions effectively. Number three would be legislation, passing legislation, and also making sure and ensuring that the city council um, meetings and forums are ran properly, uh, which means making sure that things stay in order, make sure that everyone has a voice heard, making sure that there's fairness across the board so that we are uh, acting on the legislation that's put in front of us, um, not on a personal basis, but on the stance of making sure that the council and the, the, the districts that we serve and the people and the citizens of the Maple Heights have their voice heard and are getting their needs met, not our own personal. Thank you, Mr. The duties of the council president is a presiding officer over council meetings, whether it's Mom. meetings at home or at council meetings, in addition to meeting with the administration, uh, administration officials, as well as working with council members on different issues. Um, the council president does not have a vote. Uh, the council president only votes in the event that there is a tie, and the council president runs the council office. Uh, in addition to making committee appointments in conjunction with the council vote which the council appoints at the beginning of the council's new session when they're elected in January. Uh, in addition to serving constituents, community services, and city officials. Uh, that's the role of the council president, is the leader of the council, as well as the administration there. Thank you, council. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Now we're going to open up questions to the residents. Again, we'd like to have one question at a time. There will be a, a one minute response. Um, yeah. Could you uh, raise your hand if you have a question? Seven days a week, every single month of the year. Um, in addition to that, 
I want to work and assist the people across the board. There is so many needs that our, our community faces right now. And if I worked as a 6th district, because I could have ran for 6th district councilman, it was open all the way up until the last day of um, requirements. I didn't run just in that district because I can make a difference in my, I can make an impact in my community, in my district, but that's not going to help the entire community. And so I believe the experience I have, my leadership abilities, uh, as well as my training uh, and my experience can benefit the other council members within their jobs, and that's what I want to bring to the council, is to give them an opportunity to learn how to um, do the grassroots organizing, because that's how we can inspire our community to get involved and also teaching and inspiring the leadership of the future, um, not just the present, and addressing only so many issues that we face today, because there's constantly going to be new issues that we face. So we have to inspire and also um, provide the right training, not just to council, but also to our community. I ran, I'm running for city council president because I think it's important for our council members to meet the residents where they are and help them make that transition to the next point and place within their, their lives. I believe it's important for our government to assist the residents in order to be successful for us to go forward. Right at the time, but I can talk further about that. Thank you. Questions for the candidates. Uh, just a day ago, there was a show that was everybody can talk about about the situation at Lake Heights High School. Uh, both of you guys talked about community engagement and reaching out to families and needs. Um, that was a very critical issue. So my question is very simple. Uh, you guys talk about the importance of community engagement. Which one of you actually reached out to the family members uh, about that situation that occurred at Lake Heights High School? I don't, I don't know the family. I haven't heard about it. But My question is, family. because you guys are talking about community engagement, and you care about the community, and you care about what's going on in the community, and that is the learning lesson that the community should come together. Uh, that was a very critical issue. So my question is, which one of you have reached out to the family members to talk about that issue? I didn't know you did. Thank you. I did not reach out to the family member, but I will say I'm actually hosting a anti-bullying prevention program this month. That's addressing that kind of issue. I did not reach out to the family because that's a personal issue within that family that they have to work out at this point in time. I can say that literally making the high school for 30 years, living directly across the street from the high school, we can actually check the records. There's a number of times where you'll see my name in the, the report going outside and breaking up fights. Um, I've been working with young people for over 17 years. That's my thing. Uh, I believe that our young people are a valuable asset and resource that we have not tapped into. If we can inspire those young people to see where they are, make that transition to also get involved and engaged in our community, it can help them and benefit them in the long run and also our community. Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer in intergenerational programming. And so a young person at this point in time might just to talk about that issue specifically. Uh, those young people will get a record. They'll go forward, they may never feel like they can do anything other than working at Burger King, working at uh, a retail store. They may not see the potential that they have in them even though they made a mistake early in their life. They can turn that around and make it a positive because they can reach back and help the next young person who faces that challenge in order to deal with it in a better way, in a more productive way to help our community move forward as a whole. I'm just going to just comment, I'm going to be quiet. Um, are we aware that members of the city of Cleveland have reached out to those families and are working in due diligence with those families? Thank you. No, we don't. My question is for both candidates. Uh, I hear you both talk about uh, being engaged with the community. I just want to talk about in regards to running the actual council. What skill sets do you believe you have to be able to move the means along? You have the means to move the school. You believe you have the skill sets uh, to be able to have a cohesive meeting, a meeting that has harmony. Um, you understand the right of uh, rules of order, but just having the understanding and the skill sets to move the meeting along. Do you both believe you have the skill sets? Again, my questions for both candidates. Mr. Richard. Yes, I believe I have the skill set to help move the, the, the meetings along because I'm fair. I listen. 
I give people an opportunity to express themselves in a way that's across the board fair. I won't allow one, I won't allow my opinion, opinion or my feeling to get up in the, in the way of a person expressing themselves because what they feel, other people may feel. Um, Robert's rules of order is exactly how our council operates, and that is, is black and white. So if you, as long as you stick to the Robert's rules of order um, and, and making sure that everyone is sticking to Robert's rules of order, when the ones getting out of the order, screaming and hollering, fighting and fussing, there's a, a pattern and a blueprint for all the council meetings to operate more. I've been attending council meetings lately a lot. And honestly, Robert's rules of order have not been implemented within our council meetings lately. So even if a person has experience with sitting on council right now, the experience that they have been receiving has not been the ideal experience, let me put it that way. Councilman. I'm a third term councilman. I'm also studying political science. Previously, I also did uh, international relations, after my UN and different simulations. I understand parliamentary procedure. And in our city's charter, we have council rules. There are also the procedures in the council rules that we follow to facilitate our business meetings. Council meetings are business meetings. They're public, but they are business meetings. So as a pro tem, as a quick council member, I understand the procedures and how to facilitate a meeting. So it's not about the rules, it's the council rules. And the part of the procedures that we utilize in the council meetings. I'm not going to comment like, um, and that question that I asked, the Robert Rules of Orders, uh, just to clarify that, I understand that is a, uh, a backup uh, that you use in all those spells. You go through the Robert Rules of Orders. So uh, the question wasn't asked about the Robert Rules of Orders. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Angela Gibson. I'm from the Office of
unfortunately, I think you guys will dance with the questions in the way you need to, but it, it wasn't what I was looking to hear from either one of you to see a bull pop that um, my, my opinion of having a brand new council, and I didn't hear either one of you say this, is that we're going to have individual people that have individual strengths. And I think the past mistake of council was that we were never able to come out to um, nurture or strengthen the traits that people have that we benefit the city. We have a, a lot of um, Thank you. people that have been cut Thank you. from their jobs. And I'm hoping that our council will be able to step up to a and help in the department if they have those skills, um, as well as um, being able to nurture and know what each individual strength is, so that when we do assign people to their respective committees, you know, you don't have someone in, in the school department that really wants to do um, community organizing because that's not their strength. So that's something that, you know, just as a hint, I would like to have that come out of whoever ends up winning the election. And I'm sorry, those were comments and questions. Any more questions? Good evening to both of you. Good evening. I just have two questions. One of the things that I'd like to see, and I'm going to speak as a mayor of Kennedy, um, an ideal council for me is someone, is a, is a, council, a council president, a council person, because it's so One of the things I found just very dismaying um, in months of campaigning, and, and some of it's the residents, and people don't know who their council persons are. Now, we're challenged by the fact that we don't have a community newspaper. I'd love to see the council person take charge and have consistency in the way that you communicate with the residents. Some of you have newsletters, some of you have watch, watch meetings, and some of you some of not doing anything. And I'd love to see the council person take it upon himself to organize a consistent way of communicating with the residents. Um, it shouldn't be district specific. District one has a council, a newsletter, and district two doesn't. All, the one thing that, that the residents want to see is transparency. They want to know what this news is. So while we're challenged with right now not having a news publication, we have the Maple Heights News, but they want to get from you. One of the things that's extremely disturbing is people wait some time. It's, two, it's, it's twice a month that you guys meet the council meets in the summer's recess. And to them to, to come out and take time when someone says no report, that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. I don't wish I had to be a time in this morning, but I'd love to see the council president really put together a professional um, representative of the city, more transparency, more communication, and have it consistent across all districts so that irrespective of what district you live in, you're getting the same kind of communication, same kind of representative. And I'd like to see you get out more. I know there's a lot of forms of workshops. But what's not happening and keeps coming is people don't see you enough. So I would, and I'm going to pose this question to both of you. Please tell me how you will make it consistent, but also districts get some kind of feedback from the council person. And so the second part of the question is um, show me how to be more transparent. That's my question. And then you can start first since your hands up first. I'm looking right at you. Thank you. Um, as a community organizer, I work for block clubs. <laughs> One of the things I work in the community, what I learned is how to do some things. They think there is existing block clubs to create a neighborhood association. Over the course of time, the neighborhood association became as long as it's developed in the university and the other community development corporations you see across the city. That's one of the things I want to do here in the city of Maple Heights. We have a number of block clubs that are effective on those streets, but they aren't effective for our entire community. So taking those existing block clubs and creating a neighborhood association so that we can share information across the board, we can get ahead of them in the curve, so to speak, to address safety issues prior to them spreading across and everyone, everyone becoming a victim. Uh, in addition to that, things like utilizing the services that we have to make things at our, at our exposure, at ex exposed, like Facebook, like a computer, uh, creating a new better online that is easy to access across the board. Like I stated before, I want to see our council come out of the office. The count, the, currently, the, main, the city hall is pretty much closed on, on Fridays, and we're going to have to require people to do more for less, which means on Fridays, have the people who <laughs> 
knocking on doors or sharing, um, hearing or sharing the information that needs to be heard uh, for the residents to have their voices filled. Now, let me redirect you. My question was, what you're gonna, I want to know what you're going to do. So, so not, not the city manager. My question is, tell us how the new president, the new leader, would ensure that the community is consistent across all seven districts. It's not just about the I just want, as I just explained, taking our position block and creating a neighborhood association so that neighbors and residents are communicating with one another. Also, if the block clubs are there, most of our council members have block club meetings where they're doing it, they meet those block club meetings. That will pull the entire house together. That will allow our entire council to address the issues that we not only the community, but across the board in the community. How to ensure that, simply just taking the lead, simply ensuring that our council members are doing their job with bringing out the residents who are involved in the game so that we can share that information. One of the things that's been, like I mentioned, was public engagement in the community. A few years ago, we lost the city. The city used to have a new summer that would come out winter, uh, spring, winter, summer, fall. We've lost that. I want to lift the administration and bring back that new summer. It's very important that the residents know what's happening in their community, what type of events are happening. In front of the audiences, about these things, reminders about garbage pickup, uh, grass clippings, all those things that people need to know. So I want to work with the administration about bringing back the city news center, but in terms of community engagement, having discussions from the residents, because our city is, we've lost, we've had property devaluation, we've had foreclosures, uh, we've lost population. There's been a lot of changes. It needs and the issues of the people have changed. And as council members, as the people, the rest of our members of the body, we need to be engaging our people, hearing from the people, validating the people, and coming up with solutions of how we can address the needs. Because the needs are continuously changing. So as an elected members of the body, working together as a team, having forums, engaging them on different issues, whether it's access to health and human services, because we have a large uh, population that lives in poverty. My question is for you, Councilor Councilman Jansky. Can you yes. Um, how can the residents of the city trust you to take care of matters which are time sensitive and essential to transparency? When in the past two years you failed to file your campaign committee financial reports no, 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 no. and annual finance closures on time, we're not, we're not doing. We're not attacking anybody. Well, I'm not attacking. I'm asking a question, and that's a valid question. Um, you didn't file those on time, so how can we trust you to take care of time-sensitive um, city issues um, if you can't even take care of your own committee reports and All of your financial, financial disclosures? Reports are current. They are current as of last week, um, which would be a year and a half too late for one and over six months too late for your uh, financial disclosures. Uh, they're due on April 15th each year. And your campaign finance reports are due, they're related to the um, election cycle. The annual one was due in January and you just filed that in May for 2014. The 2013 one was due at the end of 2013 and you just filed that one in May as well. And they're correct. But they were filed late. And yes, an answer.
So we have to come up with concrete solutions of how we're going to address these issues. For example, the formation of a community development corporation. The city does not have the financial resources to sustain itself and to provide resources that residents expect. Creating and forming a CDC will provide us the resources that we can provide for residents. The city does not have a master plan in terms of economic development, infrastructure. We need a master plan. We need to know where we're going five years from now, ten years from now. We need to be working on home ownership. So working with nonprofits to increase home ownership. So those are concrete policies that the council as a policy making body can work on to change the trajectory of the city. As I just stated over and over again, the importance of developing a community organization, a neighborhood association as opposed to block clubs. When he's talking about what a CDC, that's how the CDC started. Taking the existing block clubs, creating a neighborhood association where people are sharing information so it's good profit grants. I worked with a number of nonprofits where I actually had to write grants. That's something that was not underutilized for the last six years here in the Maple Heights. I've been talking about creating a CDC, a neighborhood association, for six years here in Maple Heights, ever since I ran for city council the first time. The ideas are here. The reception is not. Like we said, we have a number of residents who are currently living in the We need people who can relate to these people. I've been working all across the city of Cleveland. Many of the people I work in the city of Cleveland currently live here in Maple Heights. We have transient residents, people who live in one area, move into another home, all within Maple Heights. If the city can apply for grants to have them move money, we can use that same energy to apply for grants for renovation money. We can take on home ownership or property. Take on ownership of the properties that are vacant, renovate those properties, and bring those out directly to the citizens. That way, they can enter into an agreement with the city as opposed to Section 8, and we hold them accountable for things that fall apart.